beyond the, the, the organizations and individuals that have them. Um, so this really was marketed business to business, if you will. These were business uh, uh, principles and individuals presenting to business principles and individuals. Yesterday, so this is all very fresh, Trent and, uh, Christian from uh, Red Spot was one of our presenters. Uh, we took that same idea in a one-day session and decided to start uh, what's going to be a hopefully an ongoing process, maybe an annual event, of preparing students for global work. We had participation, uh, the, the event was hosted at the University of Southern Indiana, uh, but we had participation from the University of Evansville, local industry, and our organization facilitated, uh, put it all together, presented it yesterday. Um, there were estimates 300 to 400 people who attended this event. Uh, there were two different sessions, so one group came in, uh, a lot of the students had to leave to go to other classes, uh, so we had you know, some great support from the university on logistics and it was held at Carter Hall. Um, the initial feedback was very positive for the students that they, they took away, as we'll talk about it in a minute, uh, a lot of valuable uh, information. One of the things that, that I think was an eye-opener for the students is the global nature of our local businesses. And this is just a spot uh, of, of that. Now, there are some folks here that I know uh, that are also in the global uh, market that are not represented, but we had representatives in our different sessions from Barry Plastics, Lee Johnson Nutrition, uh, Skanska, uh, I ICI Skanska, Red Spot, uh, and Paint and Varnish, Savic, and Toyota Motor Manufacturing. Every one of these businesses uh, is heavily involved in the global markets uh, in, in, in manufacturing, in distribution, uh, importing and exporting finished products, raw materials. Every single one of these businesses all have major presence here in southwestern Indiana. I think the students maybe didn't realize what an international economy we have. Right outside here, this is a great illustration, most of the, the parts for the uh, tundra that are hanging from the ceiling, it's a great display, come, as I understand it, from NAFTA countries, most from the U.S., but that's the kind of thing we were talking about, how integrated we are here in southwestern Indiana in the international market. Uh, we estimated 200, we prepared these slides beforehand and we almost doubled that in actual attendance yesterday. So the objectives, we wanted to demonstrate support for transitioning Southern Indiana's educated talent into the global workforce. We have two great universities. They're producing really talented, young, excited people who it, at the top of their game may think there's no opportunity for them here in Southwestern Indiana. May not understand and realize that they can get jobs in the global workforce. So we had a gentleman who was an expat, who is now a permanent resident uh, here, talk about his experiences and how he came from Canada via Southeast Asia, Europe, South America, and is now working here in Evansville. And we have maybe an expat someday, Trent, talking about his experience growing up here, living here, working here, and traveling the world, uh, coming out of uh, Red Spot. Um, we also wanted to build an awareness of the local, national, global opportunities with the tri-state's uh, leading companies. One of the things, the ways we did that is all of the companies that I mentioned had their HR folks attend and talk about internships that were available for the students. And those internships ran the gamut of every aspect of the organization, from technical, science, engineering, to professional, accounting, uh, legal, business. Uh, some of them involved international opportunities, some of them involve co-op opportunities, paid internships, unpaid internships. Um, go global, I'll let Luann talk about that real quick. I'm sorry, so long story short, that event was very successful and we are planning to do it again next year. Host it at the uh, University of Evansville and we'll maybe talk about that later if there are questions about that. Thanks. We wanted to mention Go Global specifically because Mark mentioned the Goal Key program and a little bit rushed in time, so couldn't go into a lot of detail. But the really interesting thing with that program is we have actually partnered the Chamber of Commerce of Southwest Indiana and the Department of Commerce on this global program. So we actually have grants available. Uh, Viroplast took advantage of one about a year ago. Uh, so if companies, small to medium-sized companies, are interested in looking at the Gold Key program, which does have a fee and being partnered with the Department of Commerce and traveling to these countries 
traveling to markets, we have some grants that are available. So I have some flyers up here on the table, so if you're interested or know of small to medium-sized businesses that would be interested, we would very much like to bring some more partners into that program. It's a wonderful opportunity, and I think people just may not be aware of it and aware of the grants to do that. So the objective of the program is to educate the employers about the global market opportunities, assist small to medium-sized companies, and provide regular market profiles and the grants, and again, with the grants, that enables you to travel to these regions. With Enviroplast, they actually went to Europe and were looking at expanding into the European market, and it's a very successful venture for them. Just to wrap up our time period, uh, we've talked a lot about our past programs, but our future programs, it will continue um, as in our past. We've got a next event to be held at the University of Evansville with the student symposium. We're going to transfer back and forth between the two universities to ensure collaboration we have internship opportunities, which is very. Sometimes I've had interns within our own Tri-State World Trade Network. Of course, those are unpaid because we don't have a source of funds. But we've used University of Evansville and USI students to do projects for our group. But then we also work with companies. I'll give you an example um, from B. Johnson. We actually have an intern right now who is an Italian citizen and a student in Italy that we met through some acquaintances. Well, he has actually come over on a student visa with U of E and is teaching a class at U of E and doing an internship with me, Johnson, which allowed us to clear the paperwork that would have been too complicated to bring him in for an internship. So we also helped to facilitate internships between our local educated talent and global opportunities within companies. So it goes both ways, but I, I think what we've done with U of E on this um, Italian intern is, is very interesting and really a way of Really, we want to just ask, how can we help you? We're a service organization, a volunteer group. We work with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Lydia Johnson is our contact at the Chamber of Commerce. We have handouts that have all of our slides. You don't have to write any of this down, but you go through the CCSWIN um, internet page and look for Tri-State World Trade Network. You'll find all of our names and information, and then, of course, Lydia's information. So really, we thank you for the opportunity to inform you of some of the things we do, some of the opportunities out there. And again, if anyone is interested in the Go Global program, we very much would like to bring some more companies into that. Thank you. Thank you. So from any, anyone on the, yes. Yeah, I, uh, uh, for Mark first, just so you know, in Princeton, uh, Orville Redenbacher's first job was making popcorn in Princeton for Princeton. Is that right? Because uh, you had it up there. But on this go global uh, business and getting grants, uh, what's the lines of businesses that you're looking for and what's the size of businesses that represent small to medium businesses? I mean, you don't want a person, you know, one person business, I would suspect. Uh, but uh, do, do you have any criteria? Yeah, the idea is uh, companies with 500 or fewer. Points. Under 500, but I mean, if you got somebody with 10 people, unless it's a unique product, I would guess. Uh, we, I mean, we, as far as the Gold Key program, it doesn't matter to us. I mean, the size, it's sort of when we talk to a company, is the company buying? You know, are you a company? Do you have a product? Do you have something to sell? We, we, we help small companies with less than 50 employees, less than 25 sometimes. But you know, we look at them and, and, and we're honest, I'm honest, so you know, you, you know, how are you doing domestically? You know, are you selling something domestically? Are, do you have some business to speak of? And do you have all the accoutrements of that? Do you have web pages and product literature and all that stuff? If the answer is yes, then we move forward. And we, you know, we set this up and we're really grateful for the partnership that actually Dushan really has been instrumental here. My colleague here, why don't you wave Dushan so they know who you are. I mean, he is really, been the driver of this initiative. We, uh, it's actually gotten some press in Washington. Uh, so we're really excited about it because you know it, you guys are, are path breaking down here and it just shows a good partnership that we work together. So small companies can't do. You know. do, you, do you do uh, a lot where the foreign companies coming in here and are you involved in interfacing with them coming in here, setting them up with supplier bases here in Indiana? 
I mean, under the under the auspices of this program, we don't do that. No, but it different any other program. I'd have to let someone up because the Commerce Department just and I got to say this because this is a very important Congress may, wants to make sure that your tax dollars are spent helping um, Indiana companies export jobs, not creating jobs in those other markets export, or for export, other foreign companies, but for U.S. Indiana companies. Export products. Export, export products. products. Yes. Yeah, sorry, what did I say? Said oh, <laughs> okay, if that was take, take that right off. <laughs> I'm <gonna get> fired. <laughs> Export products, thank you for that clarification. And uh, yeah, that's what we do. And to that point, with our group, our focus is to help companies grow their business through export. And so that can entail many types of arrangements, whether that's supplying the contractors or contractors or companies in other markets. So it, it's a broad approach. It's just really how can we help the tri-states businesses grow international trade and exports. If you think about the membership that, of the industries, particularly the manufacturing industries that, that are on our board, um, they have such a broad reach within their organizations. Maybe not the person who attends the meetings, but, but the, the individuals within that entire organization. And chances are there's someone that they know who can help answer a question or could be a relationship or a contact for somebody who has a question, or, or a third party, a, a consultant, an expert, a resource, maybe a site selection, you know, organization who's facilitating and, and aggressively pursuing, as we have organizations, other organizations here in Southwestern Indiana uh, that have that as part of their mission. So we see ourselves really as that true concept of a network, and that we facilitate the communication and the sharing. I'm, I'm familiar with it. I was a member when I used to run Potter Brownfield uh, okay. many years ago. Uh, Great. So I, I'm familiar with your organization. If I can add to that, um, the range of companies, employees, as far as employee size, is, is all over the place. I mean, uh, companies that have taken advantage of the Gold Key program, we've, we've worked with companies the size of Cummins, which we've done many with them in uh, Africa. Uh, here in this region, there's a number of companies, even before we came up with the grant program, there's a number of companies that have participated in this initiative. But now it's even better because we have the grant program in place with the partnership with the Tri-State World Trade Council or network and um, as well as the chamber. So it's even better now. And, and it's really the smaller companies for them, is, is, it, for them it makes more sense and it's, it's, it's a, it's a help because they're going to be spending money on their logistics and per diem and so forth, traveling anyway, but this is just to help them cover some of those costs uh, uh, of the gold key itself. And let me just tell you what it is, I don't because I don't know if I really went into it enough, well, yeah, why don't you, but yeah. 10 seconds of what the government does, Commerce Department does, we sit down with you, you fill out our gold key matching form that says who you are, what you do, what are you looking for. We send that to our embassy, wherever that embassy is. And that embassy looks it over. We have a conference call to discuss it, to re uh, to reestablish, to make sure we, we know what your objectives are. And then we set up pre-screened, pre-qualified meetings for you in that country with agents and distributors and partners that will represent you. And we do that all over the world. And this has been a very uh, familiar program, very successful program, especially for small to medium-sized businesses, you know, that don't have a huge staff of people to do this for them. Now you have us as a partner to help you go into any of these markets. So if you say, I don't have anybody in those markets, you do now. Okay. Uh, in your opening statement, uh, twice you, you mentioned a fair playing field, the emphasis on fair. Yeah. I've, we, red spots an importer and exporter. Yeah. Both. So the policies that are enacted to create fairness impact us on both sides. So I wondered if you could speak a little bit about uh, what, what's being done to ensure fairness? Well, I think, you know, right now, uh, first of all, let's just say around the world, like I said, other countries like Brazil and China and organizations like the EU and others are actively engaging each other, creating, and each country is different, of course, creating uh, agreements with each other that will allow both both parties to be successful in the, in the, in the marketplaces uh, across and not disadvantaging uh, one or the other. For, you know, historically, there are uh, they may have had 
different restrictions amongst themselves that was inhibiting either products coming into their country from the partner country or the other direction. And uh, I'm not on Ways and Means Committee, but I know the, way, the Ways and Means Committee in the House, uh, Dave Camp is the chairman, and what they're, they are responsible, at least in the House, on the trade side, and what they work on, like they did with like they did with the administration on this on South Korea, Columbia, Panama, which took a number, quite a number of years, by the way, because there were stumbling blocks, uh, is to make sure that the policy, you know, when you have, you do have agreements with countries, that it's a win-win situation for everyone. And uh, right now, you know, there are countries, and I hate to keep using China as an example, uh, that uh, we we don't have not negotiated with, and they are disadvantaging our product, disadvantaging us to a certain extent uh, with what most people believe is manipulating manipulation of their currency. And uh, the question is, how do you solve that problem? And it's very, very complicated, and that's not my area of expertise, but I can tell you that, uh, you, you know, simple solutions by trying to, instead of trying to create agreements that are win-win, but trying to punish, so-called punish one country or the other uh, for their trade practices just creates a uh, just tr creates a, a trade war that doesn't benefit anybody. And uh, I think uh, the, uh, the Obama administration, I think, uh, uh, has, uh, has agreed with that opinion also when it comes to uh, tariffs and other things like that, which are really, you know, in my view, historical ways where people use Negotiate trade was based on those things, but as we pointed out, multiple people, not just myself, were in a global marketplace with it, with with emerging markets. You saw the rapid growth of the middle class in China, the, the market in China, the market in India, um, and the United States will, is, will get left behind. So, by fair trade agreement, uh, it, it needs to be a win-win situation for both sides, uh, and I think that. Uh, that can be done. If we don't do this, everybody else will, and they're doing it. And Dave Camp, who's the chairman, when we've had briefings with their committee about what's happening around the world, he says, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but he quotes numbers, 20, 30 different agreements between all kinds of countries around the world that are actively, uh, and they're actively negotiating. Like the South Korea trade agreement a month or two before we did our agreement, the EU had established an agreement with them and already started to potentially get in ahead of us. Um, Brazil, which has a big agricultural industry, you know, with it to compete with us, if we don't if we don't have agreements to get our products into emerging markets like like China, they will they'll put their products there. Um, and so you know I think you know, unfortunately, in the media and other things, these things get very much oversimplified. Uh, but the bottom line is, I think, we don't want to be short-sighted. And it has to be a win-win for everybody. And I think we can, we can do that. Other questions for the... Nobody else has any questions? Information about uh, uh, Mark that you provided uh, with the, um, the expanding marketplace and how the, the world economy is shifting is very fascinating information, I think. Um, uh, and I think that's information that would be, it would be great if the general public could get that view. If we, there was a way that we could get that view out to the general public and show people what's happening around the world and why the United States. Um, has to be aggressive in competing, like you said. Either, either you compete in this marketplace, or you get left behind. Um, uh, and uh, I think uh, I want to thank Toyota again for hosting this. Toyota, uh, obviously, for this area, for uh, for my district, is a uh, an outstanding employer. Employer um, around 4,500 employees. And the other thing to know is these are the the, the suppliers and the Toyota folks have told me. People that supply this plant 
uh, eighty percent or so of those the supplies are within a three hundred mile radius of Toyota Princeton. So I have toured some of the the other suppliers like Toyota Roshuku, for example, that makes the seats and others. Um, so this is uh, you know having more markets for the products that we make right here is creating jobs in Indiana by by not only directly here at Toyota, but in the demand for the supplies and the product and the pieces of the pie that need to be created around this area. Um, and that's, I think, uh, the message that, I, that, I, that I, I've got from everyone here and that I think is true, uh, is that uh, America can win and can outcompete the world because we make the best products. We have the most productive workforce. Um, and we have been a leader in innovation uh, and research and development for the world for decades. Uh, and I think that uh, if we do the right things and we have the right policy in place, we will continue to, to lead the world. Uh, and so uh, thank you all for coming. And yes, Stan. Congressman, I'd certainly like to thank you for putting us on, you know, from the perspective of our company, who we ship a lot of product outside the country. Uh, but we do it through uh, the, currently the federal government. So we know there's good opportunities there. The challenge for us is just as we move into outside the, the country is finding how do you work through that maze of regulations, making sure you're you know, complying with all the various laws and to make sure there's always you know, concern, uh, be it credit and other aspects. So I think the more opportunities wasn't aware of an organization that currently exists. Uh, that may be my fault, but through forums like this, it helps open it up for companies like ours to see if uh, we can't take advantage of that. So I want to thank you for putting up. So you're welcome. Thanks for coming. Thanks, everybody. Thank